where we left off last time, the party had uh, intervened in uh, some happenings at a local temple, um, destroyed said temple, called forth uh, the ferryman uh, who took away several dead people, um, and then they were kicked out of town and they are currently headed along the path on their way to the lost village of Tavi. But they haven't determined exactly what they want to do at this point because they've lost Agrios. He fell in battle, and they have picked up a, a ranger, Hyrax, who is, uh, I guess, just tagging along at this point because you know at the moment. he helped the people who destroyed the temple, so they don't want him around anymore either. So, so at this point, so Prime, Prime is uh, running the wagon and. Uh, I guess everybody is on board, and welcome back. What do you guys want to do? Okay. <laughs> I mean, are we are we are we actively yes. on the wagon? Silence. You said what you, you want to do, and my brain on the wagon, just like rolling along. Rolling, my brain rolling, just started rolling. to process everything that happened the last session, and I was like, oh, oh so much happened. I don't know. Oh, so much happened. I met my God. I can die. Like, <laughs> I'm good, actually. <laughs> uh, Vara will probably be sitting pretty quietly and contemplatively. She doesn't seem like she has any need or want. Um, she may look a little sad, though. Um, if he will let me, I mean, I guess he doesn't have a choice because he's driving the wagon, but I'm going to kind of eyes downcast, make my way up to the front of the wagon and sit near Prime. When you do, he noticeably stiffens up a little bit. Thanks. Oh. Uh, Prime. I have always tried to be bigger than my emotions, I suppose, and not let them rule me, but faced with the death of my brother, I seem to have forgotten you are my brother as well. I do not expect your forgiveness immediately, but I hope in time I can prove my contrition to you and we can regain some trust between us. I acted in a manner not befitting my clan or yours. And I apologize. And I won't say anything else. And he will ride along for an uncomfortably long time, probably 20 minutes, just staring straight ahead. I believe I owe you the apology. I apologize for misleading you, even though it wasn't fully intentional. Well, I did put magic on the map so the words would change. I apologize for misleading you and presupposing what would be the appropriate act for you to follow. I was operating on a discussion that I'd had with the other members of the group. And, well, it should have been your option to decide if you wanted to run off into a suicidal combat or go seeking your lost family member. You acted in the manner that you thought best. And I applaud you for that. But I hope in the future that you will trust me with your counsel. Perhaps if we had spoken, I would have still gone the way you suggested, and there would be no awkwardness between us now. I think we both made far too many assumptions about the other. But for my part, I at least resolved to do better about that in the future. And I will try as well. Thank you very much. I do I'll appreciate your friendship, and your counsel. I'll just pat him on the shoulder. And, um... No, I won't move. I'll just pat him on the shoulder and then just kind of lean back. Mm 
Pekaros just... will be amazingly curious about this new ranger and she'll be sitting up next to them and just asking questions. So what about your family? And what about your life? And what have you done? And who are you? I was adopted at an age before I could remember anything else about my original family. I have traveled many places and done many things. And I am Hyrax. And your name is Tigros. Yeah. Is it not? Yeah. Nice to meet you. And let's see. And he looks at the rest of the group. He's just been sitting and watching for the most part so far. Adrastos, Vara, Ariana. Friends call me Ari. Well, up to you whether you consider me a friend yet. Wouldn't being. have told you if I didn't consider you a friend. He gives her a nod. Nice hey, to meet you. All right. You didn't try to kill us, so um that's quite the a, opposite, in fact. That's a that's a plus in our book, typically. Your and truly some of our friends try to kill us, so you know, it's yeah. a scale. Yeah. Your willingness to do what you viewed as the right thing, even in opposition to your the people you claim to protect is a testament to your honor if you thought they were acting outside the bonds of what was correct. It speaks to you as a good man, a man to be trusted. From what I've seen of all of you, I think you are people of conviction as well. And if nothing else, you can trust people like you to follow your convictions. Thank you. Um, do you plan on staying with us? I, I guess we should tell you what we've been doing. Do you want to know more? It's really dangerous. Really? Quite. I would be interested to know, yes. Um, well, uh, I suppose we could all just get to know each other a bit more first. Um, well, actually, let me tell you, let's summarize. So. Uh, we all met um, at the first sign of destruction in a city, um, terrible cities, beautiful port town. Um, oh, it's New... Oh, New Atlantic. New Atlantic. New York. Yes. <laughs> New York City. <laughs> New York City. <laughs> um, we all met in um, New Atlantic and... Uh, well, there was a lot of chaos and destruction and we all kind of uh, seemed tied to each other very early on. And then, um, well, from there, uh, we got wrapped up in this, in this um, people pretending to be the gods or possibly the gods, we weren't really sure yet. And from there, we kind of took counsel and traveled and have been, well, either we've been following or we've been causing or they've been following um, some kind of godlike impersonator to some extent. Um, there's just been these various happenstances, this destruction of uh, the games and Akros and, and the waters flowing in opposite directions and impacting local flora and fauna for all sorts of different villages. Basically, many different areas have gone into chaos, and we believe we have an idea of who it's been, um, and we've been following them, or like I said, they've been following us. Hard to tell at this point. Um, and one thing often pops up at the scene. There's typically um, some kind of spear, a ball of sort with a thumbprint on it, and usually that seems to in case some kind of spell. Uh, we believe it to be this one person, this this hooded figure with hooves um, who we've kind of encountered multiple times and perhaps even spoke to face to face and didn't even realize, which is great. Um, but whether or not it's just them or they're working for a different higher power, it, it, it's hard to say. There's still a lot of mysteries, but we really are trying to do our best for 
each other and what we believe is morally right, whether that ends up being the actual right decision. We all have different goals and gods and, um, but we've stuck together and helped each other sailing and walking and escorting and whatnot. Um, we've become quite the family. And if you're someone who is willing to uh, take on such a quest, then uh, I, I think we'd be open to, to welcoming another family member. It's been difficult. I'm, I'm uh, honored that you would extend such an offer to me, but as it happens, I already have something of a family I might want to talk to about that. Hmm. Now, Tam, um, you are so. What I have heard about all of these disasters, I must have. I assume they're yeah. You're you're part of the, You're there. a ranger with the guard. You definitely would have heard exactly. a lot of this crap. So um, you're saying all of these disasters, these acts of destruction by the gods that everyone is talking about, they're all caused by this same imposter. From what we can tell, whether it's the same person each time or. Like I said, I mean, it's hard to believe that a single person is orchestrating this. Perhaps there's a group or or something. Um, we've done quite a bit of research and we continue to where we can. Um, we we are in council with um, a council member, Elitis, um, and, and a couple other people where we can kind of acquire these wealths of knowledge. But even then, we're just not sure. We've had theories about the old gods perhaps trying to come back and, and mm. retake their throne. It's hard to say. What I find curious is this thumbprint. Does it seem to have an important place in the mechanism of this magical effect? Not that we've noticed, I don't think. It just then... happens to be on all the spheres. Usually they don't activate until we touched them. We've had one that caused a noxious gas. Um, they've crumbled buildings. Uh, we've had a couple different experiences with them. They seem to hold onto magic in some kind of way. That's interesting. But what I mean is, if it doesn't serve some practical function, then it sounds like a calling card. A symbol. Which sounds... It sounds counterproductive if they're trying so hard to mask their actions as those of the gods. I wonder what their real motives are. Yeah, that's our wonder as well. That's all good points that you made. Hmm. But um, beyond just the things we've been following and doing, we're, we're of course people first. Um, uh, who would like to introduce themselves? Great. My name is Vara. Um, Captain I, first. I, uh, yes, you may hear some people call me Captain. We don't have to do that on land, but um, I was adopted myself as well. Uh, I was raised in, um, on, a, on a wonderful ship um, with my father and uh, kind of grew up in the, the pirate lifestyle, as some people will call it. Um, didn't really walk on land until closer to recent. Um, I was captaining my own ships at age 12, 13. Um, but uh, I follow the god <laughs> Athreos, who you may have seen. Um, I just, in all of my studies and readings that I did while out at sea, I, I found a connection with him and um, I was adopted off of the waves of the sea. So uh, I believe that it's kind of my divine purpose to serve him. And, and I feel that I have a, a big role ahead of me, but um, that can occur concurrently with the goals and, and hopes of everyone else in this party. So something I've been kind of pursuing on the side. See. But that's me, um, Triton, obviously, and the tentacles kind of. Um, but um, yes, I, uh, I've i got a couple of different animal forms I can take and that I'm fond of, typically horse or shark, um, kind of druidic nature. 
that I've learned through the stars and navigation. So that's me. Uh, I'm Ariana Vacros. Ari, like I said, um, follow Revere us and here to help. I'm suddenly, I'm suddenly realizing my introduction was far too long. Well, that was great. You are far more interesting than me. So it is good to have a good introduction when you have interesting things to oh. say. I hit things and help people hit things. So you're free to offer as much or as little information as you like. I uh, apologize in advance for anything I may infer without you speaking. I uh, have a tendency to watch people. Some people find it unnerving. Infer away. <laughs> That's interesting. Good skill well, you, to have. You need to watch people to learn things, so. I uh, also picked up all of your names because I can read lips. I like to That's a very people, handy skill. I like to tell people in advance uh, so that they don't feel that I violated their privacy at some point later. Very kind and thoughtful. Rostos uh, of Arescos. I'm also not very interesting, though you may know if you follow the tournament circuit, you may know my name. I'm a bit of a champion myself. He does okay. You, uh, yes, you look very strong. And, uh, I hope things start going better for you. Well, I think they will. Sometimes all it takes is a change of one's perspective. That's very true. Something I've often found. And what about you, Tikaros? Hello. I disagree. I think we're all very interesting people, and you've probably picked up on it already, that we are. We're weird, and we're amazing. And I'm... Look, I, I could get really annoying, because I have a really bad memory, and I forget things, but I feel like I've got so much potential, you know? And I have two questions for you. I want you to teach me how to watch people. Can you? Is the first question. And the second question is, who's this family that you want to go talk to? Well, to answer the first question, I can do my best, but I'm afraid it's something of a blessing that I've had for a long time. I was named Hyrax because I was... Well, the people who found me were led to me by a falcon. And uh, I'm often told I have the eyes of a falcon myself. Some sort of destiny that I was born for, I suppose. I've always better been better at uh, watching and listening than talking. So I apologize if my explanation comes off awkwardly. Apologize far more than you need to, friends. You'll find that we don't take offense easily. Certainly not with companions. Nor do I. As for my family, I was adopted as one of the many war orphans in Satessa. And I have, well, despite having formerly left the city a long time ago, I still keep in contact with a few old friends, superiors, I suppose. That could possibly prove useful in uh, the various quests being done at the moment. Yes, we've got a lot on our docket. Um, oh, and Ptolemais is asleep over there. Um, I'm sure he can speak for himself at some point, but he's um, he's a talker and a mm. philosopher. 
It's the best way I can think to introduce him, but he's charming. Uh, you'll get to know him. It's like he's the opposite so of you. She's he's the good. opposite of you totally. This is going to be really fun. He's very, he's very sleepy recently. We might need to check him for insomnia or something. It's starting to starting to become a problem. I was going to say, there's some narcolepsy or something going yeah, on. I'm very concerned. I hope he's okay. Um, well, and I, I guess um, it'd be remiss of me not to introduce you to our um, our previous companion, Agrius. I, I think it's important that we tell you of him in his recent um, passing. Uh, he was a good friend, a, a very, a, a very caring and passionate soul, uh, a follower of Mogus. He loved battle and, and action and, and encouraged others to be their best selves um, in, a, in his own ways. <laughs> he did a lot of things in his own ways that we all very much appreciated. Um, uh, he was a dear friend. Well, I'm very sorry for your loss. I know what it's like to lose people. I, uh, you may recall, I, I lost another ranger friend. Yes, well, there are lots of condolences to go around lately, unfortunately. <clears throat> but we I, must keep moving on. We I all agree. have our own missions to pursue yes right the docket um well we we've we've had a couple things come up uh there's a town that we're interested in called tavi um that we we were hoping to go to that's where we were um as we headed to as we passed through your village um or that village i don't know if you'd call it yours um so we were going there and then um well, we have the general overarching quest of trying to figure out what's going on with the god impersonators. Hmm. I, there's a lot of different cities and ideas that we've had and can visit. Tavi was the most pressing, but... Um, oh. And then there's Agrius. I mean, um, we haven't really discussed that yet, but... Uh, I, di I didn't realize that his soul would be taken. I didn't realize what would happen at all when I did what I did. Um, and I realized in passing that um, I have a favor now that I can trade in with my God. So if we want him back, I think we could bargain for it. As soon as Vara mentions... I don't know how everyone feels about that, but as soon as Vara mentions I figured Bobby, I should close it. Um, is my, am I muted? <laughs> muted, Tam. <laughs> it doesn't show I'm muted. So. An adventure into the underworld would certainly be audacious. It would, it would be a pretty heavy trial, probably the worst we've faced, but um, hmm. I, uh, like I, I said, we've kind of become a family. So it would, I don't know. Can anyone hear me? I understand. Mm -hmm. I have never done anything quite so extraordinary before, but from my, from what experience I do have, such things tend to extract their own price for what you get back from them. I'd assume as much. <clears throat> there you are. Well, oh, you can hear me? Yeah. I didn't do anything. Yeah, I don't know. That was weird. <laughs> okay. Look, well, you, you guys have figured out how to shut me up. I don't know what it is, but congratulations. <laughs> uh, I was just thinking really hard, and it worked. <laughs> I want to finish this monologue. <laughs> at, at the moment, Vara mentions Tavi the first time. Ariana, your, sense, your ascending stones uh, turn very cold. I will take a listen. All right. Your message is as follows. This is the place of dead. River runs to underworld. Have you found the place you seek? Returning to Akros is urgent.
uh i i'm the only one that can hear them right or is it like a speaker right. it, no it, it it's to okay. you because it's more in like your mind than anything telepath else. yep okay and i will i will send that to you in chat as well so that you can thank you Ooh. there you go um well if if we are interested in in looking for agrios if we think that's what he would want i have somewhat good news possibly the priests that we sent to follow the river that had turned the other direction. I'm not sure if you heard of that Hyrex, but the the river north began running inland. And they have investigated where that river went. And it is running into the underworld. Hmm. And has created some kind of portal, I believe. Um, is that do do we need to attend Tavi immediately? How 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 much longer is our journey? Yeah, that's quite the opposite direction. But it's Agrios. He wasn't finished. If we have a chance, I want him back. Also presents quite a hazard to people who rely on that river. Yes. No, we saw that firsthand. Um, and well, the reason we were going to Talvi was mostly for Tikaros to, to commune with. Well, that's up to you, Tikaros, if you wish to disclose. Um, but I bet we could probably interact with those kinds of things in the underworld too, couldn't we? I'm in no hurry to get to a town that will still be there. My friend is more important to me. Well, by land or by boat. Time will stop the wagon and just kind of turn around in his seat and look back at everyone. That oh, wouldn't prime. You never introduce yourself. I am Prime. I am an archivist in the city of Mel Melitus. I am along with this group as a note-taker. Babysitter. Hmm. Champion. And magician in training. And this Prime, too, is also a member of your family. Most definitely. Oh, yes. Honored member of our clan. Ooh. See, I've not met an anvil rod like this one before. He is like no other. So he must be. It is a pleasure to meet you, Prime. I'm honored to meet you. Uh, I didn't hear that, Tam, if you, if you said something in return. Yeah. I said, I am honored to meet you. Is my mic out again? Nope, you're good. There you okay. are. You know. <laughs> How about now? Okay, just yeah. check. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Some ASMR that I wasn't there ready for. Yeah, just start tapping on shit. All right. Um, so I just want to confirm. Um, just reading through notes and stuff because it has been a while since we decided what we were going to Tavi. What w we decided that when we were still in Akros. But what was it? Was it specifically just for Tikaros, or there was something else we were? I thought one we were. Were we following? This is where the bandit was going, like the direction of this hooded that figure. Too, that yes. Yeah. yeah, so we're on the track of following this. This, this is also where um, Adrastus' guy Tia's 
was to be given to Serenity, wife of Tavi. I don't, my notes aren't very good, guys. There's a no, lot of them, good. but none of them make sense. That's so valid. Yeah, no, there were a couple reasons why we wanted to come down here. Um, a, whenever the river changed, it it was hard to tell. We kind of had to make that decision when we were in that town of, well, do we want, what's more important, where it's going or where it's coming from? So that was part of the reason why we came this way is to see if there was a source at the yes. head of the river rather than the end. Um, yeah. Tavi, obviously in relation to Tikaros, Tikaros had a former loved one named Tavi. Yeah. Uh, but also the town rung a bell. And then, yeah, there were a couple of various people. Um, the original archival was, papers that you had me researching brought up Tavi as a point of interest as well. Yes. Because yes. it's a lost city and we thought there might be a connection to the Knicks. Yeah, so, that sounds right. Yeah. I, while I do, as much as I cared and still do care for Agrios, were I the one to die, I would expect all of you to continue your mission. And if it's a matter of the safety of the world, if we do bring Agrios back, would he want it to be, well, let's be honest, he would want it to be to destruction and ruin, but destruction and ruin not at his hand. Would he want that? It's our choice. So wise. I just think in terms of emotion, I'm so glad you're here, Ari. I fall to that many times myself. Um, but we've traveled this far. Perhaps it's best for us to continue. I'd imagine there isn't only one way to the underworld. Even this if it's is found, I mean, that's our most obvious lead, but perhaps there's one closer. I'm not sure if this will help. Uh, she's going to pull out a little wine skin. <laughs> yeah. This was water from the river. Oh, Should I give it to Vara. Yeah, uh, uh, this might be sacrilegious that you took this one. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> uh, I couldn't jump in it myself, so I figured taking it was the next best option to finding um, Agrios. Yes, I suppose if we released this and followed it, perhaps like some kind of beacon. I I would presume I didn't I don't know it's not really in any of the texts or anything I've read about my religion um it's a possibility though thank you and she'll she'll put it um she'll kind of latch it on her ropes right next to where she keeps all of her various coins mm -hmm. um I I have Whatever your decision, Captain, I think we should follow. But um, if if Tavi is where we will find more information, perhaps that is best. Well, I hate to leave something so important up to just a vote, but I, I do feel as a family, it's important everyone gets their say. So from what it seems, Ari believes it's best we continue on our path. Tikaros is missing a dear friend. Uh, ad address it. We've made enough sacrifices for the sake of the world. We go for Agrios. I like that sentiment. Well, Tolly's asleep. <laughs> Wait, Prime. Prime. <laughs> yeah, Prime. He'll just 
stare at you for a moment and you can just kind of tell the the wheels are turning and then he's going to look up in Activating the air and go logic. <laughs> <laughs> processing processing <laughs> recalculating <laughs> <laughs> it's going to point up at the air and uh you're going to notice bubo is flying back you had sent him oh. off with a message to Melitus. And he is going to come back, and he is going to land on Prime's arm. Ooh, interesting. And Prime's going to look at him for a moment. And I need everyone to roll a perception check, please. Ooh. Right, hey? Very well. First roll back. I know. Let's hope it's good. <laughs> this is my friend, In, nice. Yep. It's a 12. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I got a six. I got a twenty-two. <laughs> oh my word! Very well, I rolled an eighteen. Awesome. All across the map right now. I got a rock. <laughs> I got a rock. <laughs> Just so everyone knows how bad I am at perception, though, that was with a natural nineteen. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my word! <laughs> uh, actually, I am trained in perception. It's a seven. Yeah, my perception is plus six, and I got a 12. <laughs> uh, Hyrax, Hyrax and Adrastos, I'm so you are the... I'm so bad at perceiving things. <laughs> Hyrax and Adrastos, you are the first to notice uh, some of the the wings. The, you know, they're all made of metal on Bubo. Some of them are bent a little bit. Almost looks like he'd been shot at with something. And it, it's damaged his wings a bit. And then you catch this smell on the wind. I mean... East, a, a bit north, but eastward. It's the smell of death and battle. Blood, sweat, and tears. Uba, what happened to you? He's flown through a battlefield. There's no message attached. Although, if it was, it might have gotten detached. Battlefield between, what, here and Melitus? Here and Melitus. Ma'am, could we have the map, please? <laughs> <laughs> what do you we please? What do you please? Can please? Can I look please at the map, map of Theos? I would like the map of Theos. The map of Theos. <laughs> How can we be heroes without the map? The map Thank of Theros you. is now present. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And you are, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this map here on the yeah, screen. So I can kind of ping in the right general location. You would be right around here. So. Because was he have, back in, in Melitus or was he in Acro still? Uh, he had come back to you. He had been with you for a little while. You had sent him back with a message. Because your last no, sorry, message. No, sorry. Uh, Oh, sorry. Uh, L, the the guy that he goes to. Oh, Melitus? last you knew, he was in Akros. Okay. Because he's from a city that sounds like Melitus. Right? Oh my god, I can't remember names. Elitus is from Melitus, yes. Elitus is from Melitus, yes. <laughs> okay, so that was my question, is, is Elitus in Akros or in Melitus? Last, uh, knew. last you knew he was in Akros. Okay. Interesting. So if he went to Akros, then that's somewhere between. It's a lot of land. Somewhere, somewhere along the river, yeah. Versus if he went to just Melitus and back here, then that there's a battlefield happening here near us. Yeah, if we can smell it. Where what city we are we closest? <laughs> what city are we closest to again? Uh, well, probably just... Krimnos at this point. Oh, okay, we're closer yeah. to Krimnos. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And Tommy and which... was what beneath Hunter's Crossing, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Hyrax, does the if you sense a battle, is it south or? Uh, Tam, where did you say it was from? East? East. A little bit north, no, but east, primarily east. east. East of us would be Satessa, right? 
Uh, far east of you, yes. Far east of us, but less. So far maybe east. more in the Listus area. Grimnos, yeah, Listus would be slightly north and east. I don't know if we know anything about Listus. Mm. East, slightly north. What are Do the? I'm oh, sorry. No, Do I know anything about Listus, Tam? Uh, why don't you roll me a bit of a history check? Uh oh. What are the two places that were oh, going no. to war if the uh, temple had fallen? It Acros. Was, it was Setessa and Acros, right? So I rolled a 19 on that history check. Yeah. I also have oh. a question, Tim, when you're done answering Hyrax's question. Okay. So uh, you would know a little bit about it. It's... Uh, it's not a, an enormously large city. It's probably about the size of maybe Data Harbor. So okay. fairly good, but you know, it's it's no acros. But it, it's moderately good size. It's nestled in a in a valley uh in the mountains. Um does quite a bit of trade with Satessa. Mm. Uh but mostly, you know, farm and hunt type community. Yep. So Small community. There's a little bit of trade with Satessa. In a valley. Not much to it. I can't imagine why someone would be hiding there. There are mystery for the docket. The things we need to do. It seems like a distraction. We were making a decision. So, Pam, my question. From the new information that I have gained, does this follow the path of the army of Erebus Dawn? Possibly. Um, mm. They would have been uh, headed down towards uh, Asphodel. That's where they're supposed to be doing the siege. So they would have definitely come through this route. Mm. Okay. I will keep my thoughts to myself. Prime is going to look at Bubo and a rule. Where did this happen? And a rule is going to kind of look around for a minute and point his wing due east. Well, this is something that we could attend to on the way to Tavi. If we I'm so to. sorry. I was uh, trying to talk to Bubo. Yeah, I, my mic was off because my light fell down and I muted the wrong thing. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, uh, uh, I'm going to look at uh, Bubo and, and say, was this an attack on you directly? And he's going to kind of do an can shrug his wings as best a uh, mechanical owl can do. Did you fly across a greater battle? And he'll just nod his head. If there's been more destruction, there might be another clue on our way. If it's not that far out of our direction, perhaps this is a... As much as I would like to get to Tavi. Being new here, I intended to let you all decide for yourselves without growing in my opinion, but I have to ask, could we investigate this? I feel it's the least we can do after your help. Yes, of course. Thank yeah. you. Agreed. Okay, okay with you. Perhaps these events may tell us how pressing the... Uh destruction of the world and whatnot is in terms of making a decision about going to the underworld. Yeah, this all takes some time to think on it. I think that makes sense. East? East. East. Prime is east in easy direction. And <laughs> Vara will kind of look out the wagon at the road that we've been kind of on. He'll he'll look and then he'll kind of tilt his head, kind of like he's thinking about it for a little bit and thinking over the maps that I've seen in the past. Um, I believe if we go Follow the coastline for a ways. There will be a road that moves to the east. Okay. And he will set the cart off in that way. 
and you'll travel for about 30 minutes or so, and then he will take a turn off on this. It's it's not a poorly maintained maintained trail, but it's it's not a road like what you've been following. And follow it up a little ways, and the terrain evens out a little bit, and in front of you, about 300 yards out, you can see these stones appear in the distance. Not just rocks, but these have been placed. It's almost like a, a circle of stones has been laid out. And as you get closer, you begin to see the bodies lying along the roadside in the fields. There was obviously a battle here, and it appears to be mainly villagers, and any defenders of those villagers that you see here. Either there are villagers fighting villagers, or this was a very one-sided battle, and it's pretty obvious who lost. As you get closer to the circle of stones, in the distance, you see a figure. It walks up to one of the bodies that's lying on the ground, kneels down in front of it, places his hand on it, then reaches back and opens up a bag and reaches in and gets something else and places it on the chest. And then grabs a nearby weapon and places it in their hand, stands up, takes his weapon, and stabs them through the heart. He then moves on, looking at several bodies, until he finds another that's still stirring, and he kneels down to repeat the process. What does this individual look like? He is wearing blood red armor and carrying two spears. Uh, Ariana is going to hop down and start walking slightly ahead of the, the cart. And uh, sort of looking back, being like, I let's hope he's as friendly as he was last time. I agree. You know this individual? Eh, I hope so. He mostly killed us without actually killing us last time. So, again, like we said, some friends. Uh, it should be fine. Uh, hail! And just completely ignored, stands up. You hear him mutter some words. As you get mm -hmm. closer, you can begin to make out what he's saying. And he is repeating a litany, mentioning all the gods and asking them for favor for this warrior who has fallen. Um, and then he stabs I'll, them. I'll motion for Prime to stop before we like reach any more of the bodies and stuff. Okay. And um, Ariana at least will let uh, him do what he do and won't interrupt him. All right. I'll put I've dropped prime on the map about where you guys would be at. So. Okay. How far away from Orcos uh would you stop? I I would probably stop before going into the circle. Okay. But I, that's what she'll do. I'll follow. Quite a bit of distraction. When he stands up from this recent body, he'll turn and see all of you. And he definitely sees you there. But then he continues walking around the perimeter. And you can tell as he passes every body that lies on the ground, he's checking to see if they're alive. And he makes his way over to another body near the stone. 
kneels down, takes a coin out of his bag and lays it on their chest and grabs a weapon. Kind of places it in the ground. The, he tries to put it in the person's hand, but they obviously don't have the strength to hold it. So he kind of wedges it into the ground so the weapon's pointed at him. And then he stands up and begins his litany again. And when he finishes, he steps forward so that the blade hits his leg like he'd been attacked or stabbed. And then he stabs the person. Hmm. Interesting. And he stops and turns around and looks back at you. Are there any living near you? I'll go walk around a few and I'm, I'm going to try to, if I can, kind of stay to the edges of the circle without actually stepping into it, but. Roll your perception. I'd like to look around and see if there's anyone alive as well. Okay. Roll me a perception as well. 19. Okay. Far is going to start coining people. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> the ones that are already dead? Yeah. I only rolled a 12. All right. Ariana, as you're looking around, you come across a woman. And she does not appear to have been one of the fighters. Mm. She's probably a casualty. She had come in. She's carrying uh, items that look like maybe she was trying to tend the wounded. Mm. She is in very bad shape, but she is still alive. Okay. Um, I have a healer. She cannot respond if you're trying to talk to her. She's there. No, right? sorry. I'll I'll, okay. I'll flag. Um, it's Orcos, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and and say I there's a healer here. Not a combatant. Does, Does she have a knife? Self? I'll take a look. I'll, I'll kind of look over her and see if She's... she has any. She may have she may have a knife that could be useful for like removing clothing or something to help get to a sure. wound, but nothing nothing is a battlement at all. No. Mm. Did her rest and make her comfortable? And he continues to make his way around the circle looking for fighters. Okay. Um I will give her a point of lay on hands just to staunch any bleeding and make sure that she's not continuing to lose any blood. Okay. Uh, and then continue to look around. Unless anybody's going to do anything to interrupt or whatever, he is going to continue this until he has made the circuit of the 30 or so bodies that lie across this field. Stopping at everyone that is alive and repeating the process of looking for a weapon, placing it in their hand, placing a coin on their chest. He makes sure the weapon is held like as though it were someone fighting him. And then he stabs them. What happens with the coin? It stays on their chest. Hmm. Um... Um, it once he's finished, Ari will probably approach. Um, he'll, he'll finish his clock kind of back around near the cart where you guys are, too. So yeah, work out well. I'd like to say it's a pleasure to see you again, but judging by this, is this your work or is this my work? It's more my calling. Hmm. 
What was it that called you here? Yeah. So this this is the scene you came upon. Well, there was still fighting when I arrived. I waited till it was complete. Who were the other combatants? <laughs> a group of minotaurs and a few stragglers of other groups who joined with them. Did they carry a banner? Uh, of course, all conquering warriors do. The banner of Erebos. Did you see where they went? Mm, they were headed south through, so I presume they went on that way. I know where they're going. They're going to Asphodel. Asphodel? City well, of the Dead? Not. If you don't mind, this is a place of death. These people should be allowed to rest peacefully. I know a place. Let's let's step over here where we can talk. And he will lead you a ways off down a small untended trail that leads to a small knoll at the top of which a knoll it's it's grassy <laughs> a too. A small one. It's, it's cute. a grassy knoll. So <laughs> At the top of this is overgrown what appears to be a grave of some someone who was honored enough that they built a nice uh, gravestone around it. Wow. Is there a name? Um, if you would like to approach it and look, you can. Yes. Careful not to step on where they might be buried. Okay. Orcus will follow up a little ways. He'll stop over here. Engraved yeah, into it. Totally go for it. <laughs> engraved across it is born of a queen, a warrior of the gods, Ison Sokos which translated would be that which is made of stout amber. Hmm. Does this mean anything to anybody? <laughs> uh. I presume if you want to talk here, he's done, they're done there resting? I wouldn't say he's done resting, but he's at peace. And Orgos takes off his helmet and sticks his two spears into the ground and sits down. Who are these Minotaurs that trust us? I believe they are the army of Erebus Dawn. They are a holy army of Minotaurs in the service of the God of Death. They believe it is their mission to wipe the blight of the returned from this flame. And I'm going to say because Hyrax is very insightful. That's not the whole story. But that's the story that Adrasus is going to give you. He nods and accepts it. I see. And uh, Hyrax, this is... Um, may I introduce you? And he'll ask Orcos if he can be introduced. Orcos is going to look around for a moment. And as he's taking a drink from one of his wineskins, <laughs> uh, 
where's where's your centaur friend in the underworld did he die in battle yes he did he fought he would have liked that good for him <laughs> um this is our new companion hyrax um hyrax this is uh orcos parminian pylonor a very capable warrior. Man of many names. I assume you've earned them all. Hmm. And he goes back to drinking from his wineskin. Well, it's an honor to meet you. Hmm. And he drinks a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard about the river past Akros? Mm, the one that now flows underground to the underworld? Mm. Mm -hmm. And as someone who sends many there, uh, do you have an opinion on it? I send no one anywhere. I simply ease the pain of those who are suffering, those who've been forgotten, those who are abandoned by the people they stood up to fight for, those left on the field by those in battle without the courtesy and honor to complete the death of a fallen soul. Athrios is the one who carries and delivers. My apologies. None required. That's we the met. thing with crusaders. They don't think about the things they trample underfoot. We met him. Avara will kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> like looks giddy, just like wants to tell someone about it. I'm just imagining, I'm just imagining, Vara, I wasn't there when you met Athreos, but I'm just imagining her as like Buddy the Elf. I know him! Yeah, oh, yeah. oh my god! A hundred percent. Oh, a million percent. Mm -hmm. It was more like, it was, it was like a combination of that and then like, I don't know, like a really big celebrity, like yeah. blowing a kiss at someone and then fainting on the spot. Like something. <laughs> it was the Wayne and Garth. We're not worthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A million That's, percent. Uh, so Hyrax looks puzzled. So if there are wars with the returned, why did this? They slaughter this village. Are you asking mm. me or Orcas? Uh, he's asking Adrastos, because Adrastos gave him the information about these minotaurs. As I said, crusaders rarely think about the beings they trample underfoot. It's possible the holy mission that drives them has changed. It's possible these people were simply in the way. Their leader, Crassus, is a being of single-minded ferocity. I doubt he thought much more of these people than you or I may think of ants that cross our paths as we walk. Well, he obviously thought something of him. He gave them time to arm themselves, took them to a sacred place to fight, then killed them all. A sacred place? Yes, there have been many battles fought here. What makes it special? What's the history? <laughs> Aeson was a warrior to many gods over many lifetimes. This was once a temple the Heliod. 
his father. When he fought as his champion, they called him Eteocles, the light among mortal men. He fought in many wars from this place. He stopped the oncoming tide of darkness. It came forth from the Nessian wood. He was instrumental in the war between Setessa and Akros, fought in the name of Kerametra and Iroas, and stopped only through the interaction of Afara. There's a temple not far from here that is laid to that. Destroyed. Honor. What? A temple that no longer stands. Hmm. I've not been there in some time. That saddens my heart to know that. It, the the locals said that the destruction of the temple would thus destroy the peace between Satessa and Akros. Is that true? Well, I guess if you go with old proclamations, it would be. But seeing as how Iroas is not currently walking in this world, I doubt he'll be taking revenge. And Hermetra has other concerns. I'm sure at some point it will strike up again. They probably don't even remember what the fight was over. Like all old friends. <laughs> friends and family. No one, no one fights like family. <laughs> kind of looks around at the <laughs> people here. Yeah. Um, did you have a direction you were headed? Are you asking Orcos? Yes, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. I'm following the tide of death. Which way does that tide flow? Apparently, wherever the army travels, I hear that there's a siege in place at Asphodel. Yes. Where is that in relation to Tavi? If you were to look at the map, which I'll put it back up if you want to, <laughs> you have just a, uh, a general idea. Asphodel is down deeper past the Nessian wood into the Dark Mire area, so right. it would be it would be close, uh, kind of in between Hunter's Crossing and Asphodel. Okay, so down 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 towards the end of the peninsula a little bit, about halfway down. So if you were following the coastline, you'd go through Krimnos. Then Hunter's Crossing, and then you'd be in that area, last the lost area of Tavi, and then you would move down into the realm of Asphodel and the undead. The returned. Um kind of look to everybody and is this a tide we should also be following? This might be a push that direction. Why would you involve yourselves in the workings of the gods? To help people? I think that's gods our general have involved goal. themselves in our lives. Yeah, we've we've witnessed consistent destruction um i think we're just trying to stop it we'll bring light to what's going on at the very least 
I don't think Asphodel is our path. We're not ready for the threat we would face there. And yet you discuss going into the underworld to retrieve your friend. Do you believe you're ready for that? We have to be. Are you referring to Agrios? Yes. Um, uh, like I said, we met Agrios recent, recently. Um, I uh, had a coin that I returned to him, and in exchange, he took some souls uh, that needed taking. They've been trapped here for a long time in that temple we spoke of. Um, and one of those souls was um, Agriosis. It seems like it hadn't quite moved on or passed yet, uh, it's, which is why the keepers of that temple had taken his body. It's a long story, but basically uh, he was taken along with them. Along with them, his soul at least. But we believe we have a fighting chance at getting him back because the coin that I've returned to Athreos has uh, gained me a favor with him. And when you first mentioned that you gave a coin to Athreos, he was taking a drink and he kind of... <clears throat> <clears throat> and then when you say that you now owe a favor, he literally just kind of drops the the wineskin to his lap. You know about these coins. Please tell me everything you can about them. You're the follower of Athreos. You should know more than I do. Well, I was limited to what books were on the ship, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting. I know about the exceptions. I didn't know coins were part of it too, but now that's part of my destiny as well. So if you have information on them, I would love to hear it. Hmm. Of course. Traveling to the underworld to bring back someone, you do realize people who return from there never return whole. Your friend is dead. What are you expecting to bring back? Agrios is stronger than most. Stronger sense of self than most. I suppose more than anything, we just want to ask if he wants to. Yeah, I mean, it's possible, like you said, since he died in battle, he may not even want to come back. That would be up to him. But we have no way of asking him unless we go see him. He's going to stretch and stretch his arms and, well, you know my price for answers. You have questions I'm willing to answer, but you have to pay the price. Hmm. And who knows? Maybe I can send you on your way to the underworld without having to make a rough trip of it. Uh, yes. Um, Would we have been rested from our last combat by this point? Oh, yeah. Cool. Krista's forgotten the price. What was the price again? You gotta fight him. You gotta oh, fight right. You gotta fight him. And for every hit, we get a question. Mm. There was... Okay. Well... Adrastos now, you know, still with his shorn head, will stand up and kind of crack his knuckles. <clears throat> All right. It's fair price. Draw his sword. Kind of roll his shoulders. Yeah. Ariana will do the same. Oh. Uh... <clears throat> <laughs> uh, last time he beat us thoroughly, but we all survived, uh, also thanks to him. So death isn't really on the table here. It's more of a very painful sparring match. Oh, I never I said see. death wasn't on the table. Yeah, death is <laughs> never mind then on the table. I was about to say, <laughs> there's a reason I abstained last time. Do you remember? Um, oh, I thought there, I, sorry, Krista, it's been too long. I don't remember oh, yesterday. You're so you're good. <laughs> 
As you remember, Orcus, I have no fear of death. That has not changed. Draw your spears. Let's begin. I am... Um... Then I'll assist. Yes, I didn't participate last time, but... Um... I'm going to this time, and Var will step up. <laughs> All right. Orcos is going to stand up, and this time, instead of placing covers over the tips of his spears, he removes them. Oh. Well, then, this time, instead of fighting with a sheathed sword, Drasos <laughs> will stick the sheath back behind his shield and swing! <laughs> <laughs> Hyrax grabs yep. a shield. Everyone else is grabbing their weapons. Hyrax grabs a shield and then with his other hand reaches over his shoulder and pulls off a net. <laughs> ah! He whispers something into the net. And uh, I'm going to use a bonus action to cast Ensnaring Strike. Okay. And then throw this net. Nice. I love it. All right, roll me an attack. What a move! With, let's see your melee right, attack. We'll see if this net. works. This is all very experimental, but it goes off well. <laughs> no, I'm here for it. All right. That is going to be... What is that to hit with? 18 to hit? That will definitely hit. Okay. But what's going to happen so that I do this in proper order... As you whisper this word into your net, Orcos takes the spear in his left hand, turns, and just flings it over his shoulder at you. And yeah, it's not great. Does a 12 hit? It does not. All right. It's going to deflect off of your shield just a little bit, and then it flies back to his hand. Because he's a cheater. But you've cheater, cast your cheater. spell, you've thrown your net, and you hit. And the net on the inside begins sprouting thorny brambles from almost as if from the hemp of the rope. Um, okay. Wrapping around him. Uh, he has to roll. Uh, he's probably going to succeed on this, if I had to guess. He has to roll a DC 14 strength save. Against the ensnaring strike. Well, that is a 17. All right, he succeeds. I kind of assumed he would. It happens. Um, uh, so the they the little vines break and and shrivel. Um, but he is still restrained by the net, I believe, until he takes an action to free himself from that. Okay. Uh, and that is going to be my turn at the moment. Excellent. He's restrained. Was that not your special extra attack? Say what? Special I don't, extra attack? Uh, you, don't, you don't get an extra attack if you use a net. Ah, yeah. Rules of nets. Um, but... I was hoping I was hoping that if he fit if he failed the ensnaring strike, he would have to use two actions on subsequent turns to free himself from both of them. Nice. Yeah. Which would have been away. pretty but awesome. It was a gamble. Still pretty good. Yeah. Cool. All right. Adrastos. Okay. Um I'm going to, while he is restrained, uh just do a couple of piston stabs with my longsword. All right. I believe you get advantage because I would say I you get advantage because he is restrained. Yes. Yeah. I do. That is in fact true. Where is my good dice? There it is. You know what? I just realized I did not pick up my notebook at all. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. That just means he gets infinite HP. So nobody minds, do they? No, uh, it's okay. all good. <laughs> Understandable. All right. So first attack. Will be uh, 18. Uh, that is a hit. Awesome. For eight damage. All right. 
What type of damage my, is that? Uh, slashing. Slashing damage, all right. And for my second attack, uh, that will be a 22. And that is obviously a hit. For 10 damage, slashing. All right, and 10 slashing damage. And Ooh. that will be it. All right. Orcos is going to kind of, you know, a net. A damned net. And he is going to flex and use his spear to try and break out of this. What is my target? A 10. Easy. That one. That one. If only. It is a net one. Yes! Yes! But... but this is a this is an ability check. Nat ones are not yes. an automatic failure. Mm -hmm. He gets he a ten plus nine. He gets, he gets a, a ten. ten. Oh, <laughs> oh no! no. He has plus nine. <laughs> Honestly, but like he's struggling, and you. Oh yeah, yeah. He's, struggling he's struggling against it. You can see he is not happy about yes. this. He is a very mm. very unhappy camper about this. <laughs> Hell yeah, Hyrax! Well done. And Hyrax. he is going to turn his body slightly so that he has. One spear sideways held up in front of Adrastos, and the other one pointed slightly off to his side in the rear, pointed towards Hyrax. And Vara, you're up. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my wild shapes to take on the starry form of. What is it? Archer? Yes. Um, so when I activate this form, I can go ahead and make a ranged spell attack. Da -da -da -da. Where is the... How do I know what my range spell attack would be? It would just be plus my spell attack, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's the same. Attack modifier. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's a 24 to hit. That is a hit. Oh, Ooh. damn right. Oh, and that's, that's going to do four damage. <laughs> All right. What type of damage is that, by the way? That's radiant. All right. Shiny damage. And I feel like we, I, I love asking the same question multiple times because I don't remember things. <laughs> um, starry form being a spell doesn't then prevent me from casting a spell on the turn, right? Because no, it's that's that's a, a wild shape bonus a action. Isn't wild it? shape yeah. bonus action. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Correct. And then I will go ahead. Let's see. And then did radiant damage seem to do well against him? Um, you can definitely see that he took some damage from it, but not anything excessive. Okay. Um, I will say where you hit him, let's say you hit him square in his chest plate of his armor. Sure. The, the star on it. Um, that's emblazoned into it, kind of uh, darkened like it'd been burned for a moment before returning back to its normal color. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, then, yeah, I'm going to follow that radiant with just more radiant damage and go ahead and do um, Guiding Bolt. And I guess everyone's decided we're not here to fuck around. So I'm going yeah. go to go ahead and cast at the third level. So that would be, ooh, I hated how that dice rolled. <laughs> That'd be an eleven ticket. That is a miss. Yeah. Let's. Cool, cool. And that ends my turn. All right. Tigress. Ooh. So I'm feeling very uncomfortable. Ham, that's Ari. Right. Oh, is it? Is it? Yeah. Oh my goodness! I am so sorry that the icon is so the icon is so small. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, hold on. No, valid. <laughs> I, am, I am so sorry. <laughs> I wish I would put the name up there with the icon. I apologize, yeah. Tukaros. You can you can kill me in a minute. Ariana, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh okie dokie. Um uh did I also notice this radiant damage? If you're you watching, do? I do would I know say she sure. radiant. Okay. Intriguing. Um, in that case, I was just going to do a second attack, but in that case, I think I'm just going to go ahead and cast Divine Favor on myself with the bonus action. All right. uh, and she is going to bound forward and uh, flank Adrastos and then where are buttons button where are you button there you are fine here um oh it rolled a dice for me okay it rolled a three so if I hit or not I'll do an extra three <laughs> uh okay that's a uh what's my attack I know how to play games. <laughs> um, <it's>, uh, <laughs> I'm not used to D and D Beyond. I always use like my own Google Sheets because I'm that nerd. Um, so that's going to be a 21 to hit. That is a hit. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so three radiant damage and uh, six regular damage. All right. Very good. And she'll kind of grin about getting ready to go. <laughs> All right. Is that it for you? It's all leafy. Yes. <laughs> and Tikaros. Oh, bouncy. Yeah. I'm still feeling uncomfortable. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I'm going <laughs> to do a little bit of cool, dexterous jumping over this grave. And I'm going to try and get down behind it and get a little bit of cover behind the grave. And then I'm going to summon some darts of magical force and direct them straight at Orcus. Right. And I'm going to cast magic missile. And seeing Vara just go all at it, I'm going to do this at the level two. We're throwing it all, right? All We're right. throwing it all. All right. So that is. Go all out just this once. Yeah, a little so like black and white to match her hair. These darts, colored, magical, just black and white, shoot out of her hands. And that is going to be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen points of magical damage. Right. Hang on, what does magic missile do? What kind of damage is that? That would be force. helpful, wouldn't it? It's force, force yeah. damage. Yeah. And then I'm going to duck a little bit further. And just peek up over the grave. All right. That's it. Very good. All right. All right. Your net is now ripped apart. I'm going to have to get a new one. <laughs> what would you That's like okay. To I actually had two in my inventory, so we're good. Um, <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Finding him. Uh, Finding him to be probably too strong for such tactics, uh, Hyrax is going to back up, grab one of his javelins, and throw that, and probably throw up with another. Actually, first, first, you know what? First, um, his his eyes look hawk-like enough, but uh, <clears throat> for a moment he whispers something to himself, and his eyes look truly just like that of a hawk as he focuses in on this guy and he's going to cast Hunter's Mark. Okay. Um, and then throw one javelin. Good. On sidebar, Ranger Warlock multiclass, Hexblade, your curse yeah. and Hunter's Mark stack. <laughs> just saying. That's fun. It's 23 to hit. That's a hit. With, uh, let's see, that's seven plus 
three plus two. So that is 12 piercing damage on that okay. first one. Nice. And then I'm going to, whoops, going to attack again. And that is a 25 to hit. That's a hit. With 11 piercing damage. All right. Ah, okay. Very good. Uh, and he says, after throwing these, is that better than a net? And that's the end of my turn. All right. Addressed us. Okay. Well. Um, Adrastos smiles again for the first time in a few days, um, and will kind of raise a sword. Well thrown, Hyrax! Um, and then, not to be outdone, because now he's got that wonderful rivalry competitive spirit back, uh, he's going to use his bonus action to fainting attack. All right. Uh, natural 20. Nice. This is not going to feel good. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, so that is, before I roll, 22 damage. Okay. So now let me roll. <laughs> All right. So that is 22 plus... 15. So that is 37 damage. All right. Nice. <laughs> that is a lot of damage for one hit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, and then I'll take my second attack. Okay. Um, which is a 23. That is a hit. For a slightly more reasonable 11 damage. All right. Got it. And that will be me. All right. Very good. Orcos puts on this big smile. And the first thing he does is he takes his one spear that he had pointed towards Herax and throws it. Just kind of a, a toss towards him. And that is going to be a 24. Yeah, it just barely hits me. <laughs> yeah, you got me. Well, you know, a little a little's better than none, right? <laughs> and the second I'm trying to get this up here. That is going to be eight piercing damage. Ooh. Plus an additional three necrotic damage. Oh no, he's got the goop! Interesting. He's going to take his other spear, and first thing he's going to do is shove backwards with it, with the butt of it towards Ariana. And that is going to be a 22. To hit you know kind of just a little bit all right just a little bit and that is going to be five blunt bludgeoning damage he's then going to take the spear and shove forwards at adrastos with the pointy end why i haven't done anything to him <laughs> not not at all <laughs> you're fine uh that is going to be 27 to hit that will miss no. <laughs> I was waiting for you to That's say something like that. That's actually too high of a number, and yeah. so it's looped back. It, it goes it's over, it, it goes around, over yeah. him, right? Obviously, exactly. it goes over him. And that is going to be 10 piercing damage, at which point he draws the spear back and then jabs with it again. And that one is only going to be an 18 to hit. That'll still hit. Good enough. Did I just count four attacks? Yes. 
and that is he going might to... kind of be a demigod <laughs> maybe okay. we're not really sure and that is going to be seven piercing damage okay and with that vara you're up okay well we'll go ahead and do the good old archer bonus action with a 14 to hit. That is a miss. Cool. And then she's going to try Guiding Bolt again. OK. Please. Oh, not one. That's a seven to hit. Tragic. <laughs> that's a going to miss it. That's going to miss it, too. <laughs> yeah, there goes my two third level spell slots. All righty. That's it for her. She's fucking struggling. <laughs> well, j just to be honest about us, Orcos isn't looking too good either. <laughs> he's kind of oh, the no, snot no. beaten out of it. No, she's like <laughs> she's like gushing over Adrastos, getting the wind back in his sails. So she's like, "Yay, Adrastos! Oh, I guess I should do something." To oh, then, yay, Adrastos! <laughs> Ariana. Ugh, um, cool. Mm, okay, I'm just gonna take uh two attacks. That, well, okay, so here's the thing. So uh, two weapon fighting is only when you have an offhand weapon, correct? Yeah. Okay. In that case, um, what am I doing then? Uh, I guess I am just gonna attack. <laughs> All right. I really need like a offhand weapon. <laughs> is there are there feats and stuff for like attacking with uh shields, like using a shield as an offhand weapon? There is a shield mm -hmm. or a feat for like not not bashing. like not like bashing with it, but like you can use it for shove attacks and stuff like that. Yep. Cool. I, I miss I, I had a character that like literally just like cut people in half with their shield in Pathfinder and it was sick. <laughs> That's not one. Uh, that's a miss. That tails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's it. All right. Tikaros. All right. I feel like I feel like at this point, having just been talking about just losing a Grios in the last battle, I think Tikaros will be having a bit of post-traumatic stress going on with this battle raging and this guy being so strong. So at this point, she's going to just start like a little mantra under her breath, hiding behind this grave where she is. And she's just going to say, we're not losing anybody else today. We're not losing anybody else today. And she's just going to keep repeating it over and over. And then she's going to hurl a fireball at this orcus creature. All right. As soon as you place your hand up to launch this firebolt, oh, no. it's going to toss his spear at you. Oh, no. Don't but I'm so dare. puny. I'm so puny. <laughs> that is. Hold on, I'm trying to do my math here. That is. <laughs> <clears throat> that is a 30 to hit. Oh, oh my, God. my word. 10. <laughs> Th does that miss? Oh, it just just gets me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah, but then. Then I roll poorly on the damage. Uh, that is going to be seven piercing damage. Oh, damn. Okay, okay. Well, I said I was doing my firebolt, so I'll take it. Ah, and I'm still going to get it off. All right. And I can. your firebolt blasts at the same time his spear flies back to return to his hand. Oh, this guy. Ah, that's terrible. That's a 10 to hit. I'm too hurt. That, that misses. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I see it shoot off and my mantra. I just quietly go back to my mantra. We're not going to lose anybody else. We're not going to lose anybody else. A little shaken. And that's my turn. All right. All right. All right. All right. So are these trees actually here? Yes. Do I see on the map? Yeah. Uh, Hyrax is going to go try to take cover behind one of them real quick. Just move. Um, and then he is going to, he's not above that. As, gonna, as you run gonna, behind, as you run behind it, you hear Orcus go. <laughs> 
uh, wrong bird, but uh, pretty much <laughs> unfazed, he's going to to lean out and uh, throw a javelin. All right, get him. Uh, that's that's nat twenty. Yeah, that's a hit. <laughs> All right, crit these scrubs. Uh, so let's see. How are we handling nat twenty? Is that double dice? It's or what uh, is it? it was max damage plus roll, I believe. Mm -hmm. Max damage plus roll. Okay, yep. so would this count for the hunter's mark as well? Oh, absolutely. And I still get to okay. So it's nice. Make it hurt. Come six. on. All right, so that is Marcus obviously 17. likes this. <laughs> Seventeen is max damage. Seventeen piercing. Okay. And then I'm going to roll the actual 2d6, which is going to be uh, 14 piercing. All right. And then I still have an extra attack. OK. That one is going to be 11 plus 6, 17 to hit. All right. That is a hit. Uh, five plus three plus three plus two is um sorry. Uh sorry, my brain is not working. Thirteen <laughs> piercing damage. How much? Thirteen piercing damage. Thirteen. All yep. right. For the second attack. Orcos falls to his knees. Ooh. And you see as his hands slump to the ground and his head falls over. And then you hear this noise as his the red of his armor just kind of brightens and you hear this kind of almost a slurping noise as the blood that has been flowing from him is absorbed into the armor. And he looks up. That is my turn. Give me a second, gotta roll some dice here. Very good. All right, so he is still down on his knees, but he has his weapons in, out in front of him, and Adrastos, it is your turn. All right, um, Adrastos is not quite battle frenzied enough to not see a fallen warrior, so he's gonna Put a sword out. Do you yield? No. Good. And then he's going to use fainting attack. And the way he's going to do this is he is going to spit blood in Orcus's face Ooh. from getting stabbed. Okay. <laughs> nice. Um, so. Oh wow. Both. Golly. Uh 15. That is a miss. But that's okay. I have a second attack. Oh, that's a little bit better. That is 25. That is a hit. Cool. Eight damage. All right. Got it. Okay. That's it. All right. Orcos has got a spear in each hand. And he's going to take the first one and bring it up kind of sideways to hit you with it, almost like using it as a club. Okay. For the back of it. Can I use my protection ability to give him disadvantage? Protection fighting when wielding a shield and a creature you can see attacks a target other than you within five feet, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage. I don't know if that's he needs to be within five feet or the target needs to I be think within the, five feet. I think the target's supposed to be within five feet of you okay, so that never you mind can then. reach with the shield. That's the only reason I'm kind of going... Same. It's that and I also have interception for my fighter fighting style and it also says within five feet. I think but you have I think it's the target. Yeah. the target. Yeah. I'll move over next. <laughs> so he attempts to hit you with that and it just kind of deflects off. He doesn't do much damage with it. Great. Hold on before you roll. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to use my superiority die to repose, and as it skates off, I'm going to take the momentum, turn around, and slash him across the face. Okay. We, uh, uh, because repose is cool like that. It is. All right. 
16? That's a miss. But I know his armor class now. <laughs> but as you attempt to do this and you miss, he takes that spear and cuts back across in a riposte across your face. Okay. <laughs> And I don't think the 12 is going to hit. So I think we're going to just call not. that one. We're going to call that one. A <laughs> nah. <laughs> just, it's the shield just, dance here. Just exchanging nothings at this point. He is going to use his other, the point on his other spear and attempt to stab you in the midsection. Orko's perfectly symmetrical fighting will get us nowhere. <laughs> and uh, that's a 22. That'll hit. At which point he stabs you in the midsection and goes, I agree. Oh my. And that is going to be 14 piercing damage. I'm fine. And having that hit and strike you with it, he reaches forward to place his arm around your legs in an attempt to grapple you. And he is using a superiority die along with to do that. So that is going to be a 26. I mean, that hits, yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a grapple, so it's a... Oh, it's an opposed. Contested, yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay. Let me see if I have anything that'll help me with that. No. Thankfully, my athletics is very high. Not high enough. It's not a 26. All right, so he's just going to grab you and kind of hold you up a little bit. And let's see, that's... So you are you are within his, his grasp at this point, and Vara, you're up. Okay. Um, let's go starting for Marcher, baby. Let's... Try again. I would love to hit this man. That's another nat one. I would love to, for one. you to get a nat one now. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Thanks so much. Oh, you did? Wow. I was uh -huh. joking. No, I'm <laughs> crit a, fail team. A million percent did. Thanks. Thanks As, so much. Um, okay. Um, I am going to. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say that your shot then is going to miss and hit Adrastos for one oh, point damage. God. So it's not going to do a lot, but you definitely missed. And since he's got him in front of him, he kind of uses uh, dressed us as a shield. Sorry. Um, it's all right. <laughs> please, You're doing wonderful. Please hit. Please hit. <laughs> yeah, she's going to. Please. <laughs> then I'll do. I'm going to try guiding bolt again. Second level, please. Right. No, it's a three. <laughs> that is also a miss. Uh, okay. Ariana. Hey. Um yeah, I'm gonna try and hit this guy. Am I at disadvantage or anything? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say he's got uh maybe a little bit of cover. So I'm going to just give him a slight bonus to his armor class. So I'm okay. going to put him at, and I don't care if you know his armor class, I'm going to put him at an 18 instead of a 17. Okay. Um, I'm <laughs> going to also take it just a little step around um, so that I am within five feet of Adrastos and so okay. I can use my abilities because um, I keep forgetting I have them. Uh, pow pow. Uh, that's going to be probably not enough because I don't think I'm plus eight. I'm not. I'm only plus five. Um, cool. So that's only a 15. All right. And that's it. All right. Tigros. It's time for more fire. Firebolt! <laughs> ah, that's better. That's going to be oh, 17 to hit. So that's going to be a miss. Oh, that's no. not enough. It's so oh, close. Fire. If it had if Scream. it hadn't been for a Drastos in his arms. <laughs> <laughs> so this has to singe some fur. Why are you what so big and beefy, Adrastos? Jeez. 
Oh, but you do oh, have goodness. some nice fire streaking past your ears at this point. There you go. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Hyrax, you're up. So Hyrax reaches behind his back for another javelin and finds that he has a single one left. Uh, thinking better of it, he instead reaches down to his belt where he has uh, darts and Tam, if you know what I'm thinking, I'm imagining that the darts look more like, you know, like a pumbata. Okay. Um, uh, so he takes one out, and he is going to attempt to throw a sharpshooter shot uh, oh, wow. at him for his first attack. We're going to go for it. I don't, I don't anticipate that this will hit. But if it does, oh boy. <laughs> if it does, it'll be cool. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, that definitely does not hit. That is a three to hit. Um, yeah, that's definitely not quite going to be. As the dart goes wild, he then, perhaps against my better judgment, he is then going to run around this way to the other side of him. Uh, trying to catch him off guard as he quickly grabs his last javelin for a melee attack. All right. Uh, so let's see how that goes. That is a 13 to hit. That is a miss. Ah, well, they can't all be winners. <laughs> <sighs> uh yeah so uh yep that's his turn all right adrastos you are grappled what would you like to do so i'm assuming because i'm grappled i don't count as flanking no no cool that's fine i'm going to just hit him with my sword and i bet i do because that's a 26 that is actually good enough. Aw, oh, man. For seven damage. Okay. Well, that's damage. I mean, you know. Yeah, it's just yeah. my minimum damage. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, then, yeah. which is which is not a bad thing to say, minimum damage seven. But uh, then I'm feeling frosty and angry. So I am going to... <laughs> Uh, because I like to narrate my fainting attacks, I'm just going to grab the top of his helmet and turn it around and then attack him <laughs> with my sword. <laughs> that just sounds like a cartoon. Yeah, <laughs> this is my last superiority die, but All right. seems like the time. Uh, okay. I rolled the same thing on both of them, but it's a dirty 20. Uh, that's good enough to hit. And 11 damage total. All right. Let me mark that. Come on, roll 20. Cooperate. All right, there we go. Cool. All right. And that is it for you, I assume? Uh-huh. All right. Oh. As he has uh, Adrastos in his grip, he's going to take and body slam you to the ground. Okay. And so he's just basically going to throw you down and you are prone at okay. this point. Okay. Using the spear that he has in his right hand, he is going to just sweep around and try to hit Hyrax, followed by Ariana. Let me get another guy here so I can do each of those. Uh, I'll give him disadvantage on Hyrax, please. Okay. Because he is within five feet of me now. Uh, he absolutely misses Hyrax. No doubt whatsoever. That is an, an absolute miss. Uh, that is going to be a dirty 20 to Ariana, however. That'll do her. All right. And that is going to be 10 points of piercing damage as he brings the blade, the point of the spear to jab at you. <laughs> Uh, 
At which point he is going to look over <clears throat> at Tikaros and say, I'd appreciate it if you would step away from my friend's grave. I guess I would have to respond on my turn, but I just look back at him. <laughs> and he is going to stand up. <laughs> Vara, you're up. Please hit, please hit, please. <laughs> <laughs> Nope, that's a 12. That is a miss. That was for Archer. Um, Vara, in frustration, <laughs> is going to go ahead and move up towards him and stand next to him. And just, gosh, please. <laughs> and she's going to take her scimitar uh, for her side, which she rarely uses, and just slash out just in frustration that none of her spells are working. And that's a nine. Okay. Well, as soon as you, as you move up and draw this, uh, as soon as you step into range with him, he takes his spear. I already used my reaction. And he is going to stab at you with it. Okay, go for it. And that is going to be a 19 to hit. Hits. All right. And let's see, I got to roll damage in all that. I'm new to using superiority dice. I've never done this with a... Isn't it fun? <laughs> I'm enjoying the heck out of this. It's I great. Bet. I bet. <laughs> that is going to be eight piercing damage. Okay. And he and he okay. just looks in your way and he goes, I didn't want you to feel left out. Ariana, you're up. Gee, thanks. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna hit him again, hopefully. Mm -mm. That's a nat 20. That's a hit. Uh, so that's a max of a four for my guiding or my um, uh, divine favor, um, which of course my D fours are the one D that is not here. Let's run away. There it is. Uh, okay, so it's going to be oh, one. So five, divine or radiant damage. Okay, and then six plus one. <laughs> Seven plus two, eight stabbing damage, please. All right, very good. Got all that. Uh, and that is it. And she'll prepare to try to deflect. Very good. Take a rest. Um, as as he says, get away from the grave. And I'm looking at him. Is he looking really rough? How's he looking? He he maybe looks like he's been welled on a little bit, but he doesn't look too bad. Oh jeez. Okay. Stupid magic armor. Stupid magic armor. <laughs> oh, we gotta get flanders. some of that. <laughs> 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 gotta get us some of that. Okay, but I'm respectful, so I'm going to back up a little away from the grave, but I'm gonna try and keep try and keep a little bit of cover from it, even if I'm moving back. She's okay. gonna try. Whether that works or not, we'll see. And frustrated also at not being able to hit, she's going to summon her magical uh, magic missile darts again and go, I know he's hit. Ah! And use her. This is the last third level spell. So she's going to go all that. Five darts plus five. That's right, isn't it? Yes. Ah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 13 points. Nice. I am such a powerful sorcerer. <laughs> Do you say this out loud? She does. Right. And All he goes, and as they hit, you see him, you can see him hit and they kind of hit and he just kind of stands there and he goes, oh, yes. Oh, yes, you are. Yeah. That's well done, Tickeros. <laughs> 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 Arax, you're up. Okay, 
so I'm in melee now, which, you know, debatably a good choice, but here we are. Uh, yep. I'm, there's not a lot I can do other than just continue attacking him. All right. Uh, first attack, jabbing out with the javelin. Okay. Jabby, jabby. Get him oh, in the butt. Okay. That one, I believe, is going to hit. It's a 24. Oh, yeah, absolutely. With. Uh, okay. Um, sorry, uh, 16 piercing damage. Wow, that's pretty good. All right. Yep. I rolled a six and a five on 2d6. He's looking a little more rough now, uh, Tikaras. <laughs> and feeling, feeling emboldened by that. By that hit follows up with a second attack. Pam, I swear, I I swear, I'm I'm sorry. I don't. I wish I had a cam on on this thing. It's it's another nat twenty. I don't know. I love it. All right, I don't know awesome. What else to tell you, awesome. <laughs> uh, so Amazing. The, I rolled the damage dice at the same time, so it's, uh, eight plus five, thirteen. And but the maximum I believe I said before was 17, right? Yeah. So 17 plus 13 is 30 damage on that second All right. attack. And you hit him and he falls again to his knees. And his head goes down. He's a final he fantasy kinda, bad guy. He kind of shrugs a bit and <sighs> That one hurt. <laughs> when does this battle end? Are you giving up? I'm not. And not Clearly yet. neither are you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Adrastos. All right. All right. Well, Adrastos is going to stand up. Um, he is going to reach down and he is going to tighten his armor with a wince to reset his broken ribs. Right. <laughs> um, and then he is going to take a swash, a swash with his sword. <laughs> I don't know what happened to me there. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> uh, 30, 20. That is a hit. Uh, oh, 12 damage. All right. And once more. All right. Come on, roll 20. Uh, there we go. Higher. Uh, no, no, it's another dirty 20. All right. For eight damage. All right. That's it. He, go he goes down to his knees. Again. And he looks up and sets his spears down on the ground in front of him. And then I'll put him up sword point. Do you yield? I do. Shink. And then I'll I'll sheath my sword and offer him a hand up. He'll take it. Cool. And once once on his feet, he will actually lean in and hug you. I'll, I'll hug him back. <laughs> uh, I have to ask Tam, where are my javelins that hit him? Are they still stuck in him somewhere? Or that's why he hugged me. It was a ruse. <laughs> he, he, looks, he looks like he looks like a porcupine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, there were four of them. There were four of them that hit him. I, I think he would have. From... I think as he was yeah. swinging his spear around, if there were any, he would have knocked stuff like that loose. Okay. Loose. okay. So. Uh, Hyrax just takes a, just sighs and goes and collects his spears. Um, after the hug, um, Adrasos is going to take a couple steps back and then just kind of like collapse into a sit because now <laughs> that the battle adrenaline is off, he feels everything. <laughs> uh, Ariana's going to go over and pat Adrasos on the back um, and give him 10 points of healing. Okay. Who's looking, who's looking the worst now after that? <laughs> Orcos, probably. <laughs> Yeah, probably Orcos. <laughs> well, sorry. Aside. You know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. If Orcos is looking the worst, Hyrax will actually walk up to him 
and uh, touch him, touch his shoulder and cast Cure Wounds. All right. Uh, and he's going to heal. Uh, not amazing, but six points of damage. All right. Little blood trickle that's running down his cheek stops, you know. <laughs> Blood's oozing out everywhere else, but that one stops. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, oh, thank you. How many answers have we earned, warrior? A few. Let me, <laughs> let me speak to you all first. Tikaros. He kind of waves you in. Okay. And he begins to describe to you about the ways magic works, the ways things spin together, and specifically points out Vara hitting Adrastos with her, her magic. And, you know, I understand there are some things that are like this, but if you do this and pay attention, and he begins to explain to you ways to subvert damage to your fellow compatriots when using magic. Amazing. So from now on, when you cast a spell that would cause damage to someone else, any of you cast a spell that would cause damage to another party member in your group, if there is a DC saved involved, they get advantage on that save. Nice. That's awesome. Wow. Very cool. Gosh, Very I can't swell. wait to cast all my spells. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as now the only spell as the only non-spellcaster in the party. Correct. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Uh, prime, yeah, Prime, yeah. get over here. Listen to this. Listen to this. Prime. <laughs> Prime's like sitting back at the cart just watching yeah. the whole thing. He's got popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's so cool. He's just he's just mystery science theatering us. Exactly. <laughs> Him and Bubo are like running commentary. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Orcos with a chair. <laughs> Big McLarge, huge. Exactly. Chunk, lion buddy. <laughs> Beef stroganoff. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, we need to play worldwide wrestling, guys. Hey, I'll fist punch. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so Orcos will make a small fire and uh, take some different provisions that he had and uh, begin cooking some small meals for everyone. Um, I would actually like to, and this is this can be after the meeting, but like just before the session ends, uh, Adrasos would like to take a moment to have a little private fire to himself. No, you can do Not that now forever, if you'd like but, to, whatever. Okay, but. so Adrastos is going to go, um, and he's going to make a fire. Um, he's going to tell everyone, he's like, I'll, I'll be right back, I have something I need to take care of. Um, and he is going to take out the torn red uh, wrap that he got from Aramaz's son. And he is going to close his eyes and put it to his forehead and say in Leonin for Aramaz of the returned if his spirit has left this plane may it find peace with the ancestors and if it has not may the sun rise on him surrounded by the corpses of his foes and then he's going to throw the wrap into the fire all right how far away are you from the group? Are you sufficiently far away nobody would hear you? Or Yes. Okay. Just trying to make sure the intent there. All right. Are you sufficiently far away that your lips are not visible? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as soon as that's done, he's going to just say another quickly on in prayer, and then he's going to douse the fire and come back to the group. Okay. Now, Orcus is just going to start eating as soon as the food's ready. Okay. Join. Um, as I think it was Adrastos asked, um, 
how many questions did we earn? Mm, a few. Just ask. <laughs> You're among friends. The coins. Do what? The coins. <laughs> the coins? Yes. Tell me what you know of the coins that Athria seeks. Oh. Well. The gods can be heady, cruel, and vindictive at times. Adrasus will snort. <laughs> <laughs> they made a few coins and placed them into the world. They're objects, really, uh, but Athreus only desires coins, so that's the form they tend to take for him. And he was told that his mission would be done and could be passed to someone else if he collected all eight of the coins. But How many does he have? Well, if what Vara's telling me correct, I would say one. That's what he said. Ooh. Would be passed on so he would no longer be the farrier? He'd be relieved would... of that duty and responsibility and could do other things. Who would take the who would take the throne then? The person who gave him all the coins? I don't know. It could be a hmm. blessing and a curse, I suppose. Hmm. Maybe there Eight. would be no one and the dead would just make their own way into the underworld. Eight corresponds to the same number of exceptions. Is that nearly a coincidence? Hmm. Possible. You'd have to ask the gods. I sure would. Orcos, do you know anything of the weapon of Porphyros that fell in the despair lands? His smile fades from his face. Have I touched a nerve? I mean no offense. Someone else asked me about a weapon of Porphyros once. And, like a fool, I answered him. A Leonin like me? Yes. Very much like you. Yes, he would have been. I'm assuming I'll get no answer from you, then. You've earned whatever answer you want, but I am giving you the choice... To forget your question. As you said, Orcos, we're among friends now. We've crossed blades many times. Warriors can speak to one another through our fights. I think you know me well enough now to know that is impossible. <laughs> Perforus made many weapons. And he actually kind of lays his hand on one of his spears as he says that. He made weapons strong enough <laughs> to kill the gods themselves. As you can imagine, the gods were not too pleased with this. So he was told to destroy them all. Perforos likes his pretty things, though, and he, he loves his works of art. And while he's willing to destroy anything he made to make something better, well, one of the other gods remarked on the beauty of the sword he had made. So he placed it in her temple. at the bottom of the Siren Sea. I don't want to be presumptuous, but I assume if it's at the bottom of the ocean, that would be the Temple of Thassa. 
That would be a fair assumption, my friend. Thank you, Orcus. You've given me a great bit of peace with this. I'm glad it gave you peace, but don't thank me, especially if you have any intention of pursuing it yourself. He's going to kind of look around at the group. Not now. We've had enough loss. But perhaps in the future, with the assistance of my clan, yes. And on the matter of loss, on behalf of the rest of this group, I would like to ask, do you know if there is another entrance to the underworld aside from the river and Hackers? There are many entrances to the underworld. One nearer than that. Well, I could stab you through the heart now. <laughs> mm. One without dying. Mm, those are a bit more challenging. Erebos does not like the living to journey into his territory, and if you do, he's liable to claim you. You realize that, don't you? I'm sure we had a guess. Getting into the underworld alive is difficult. Getting out? I'm not sure that's ever actually been done. Up to trip to the temple is in order. I'll pretend I didn't hear you say that. <laughs> I believe your answers are more based on an extensive knowledge than prophetic. But based on your knowledge of the world, do you feel any good will come of us going to Tavi? Mm -hmm. He's going to uh, kind of Sideways glance at Tikaros. Depends on what you call good. Or the greater world, if not ourselves. Even the gods can't decide what's good for the greater world. Who am I? Do I think you fair. will find what you're looking for? I'd say that's almost a surety. Hyrax will notice because Hyrax has incredible perception. <laughs> and probably the rest of the group too, that when Orca says the gods have little to decide about the, what's good for the greater world, that Adrastos kind of like twitches and starts to flex his hands. If you're looking for a shortcut, well, a live cut to the underworld, hmm. the nearest would be probably in the Skull of Vale. Hidden between the mysterious stones, the end of the Grey Forest. It said that there's a house there that belonged to a man of great learning who found a way to open the river and call the, the path of Athreos to the underworld. But I doubt you could do it. It, it was reported that he had a, a a piece of Athreos's boat or water of the river or some strange thing such as that. And if we had water of the river? I'm speaking specifically of a, a not just any river. You understand this? We understand. Yes. I don't know. It's a legend. Well, it's 
The best we have at the moment, I suppose. Skola Vale is still some distance. Is it on the way to Tavi? <laughs> Past it? No, it's... Well, Tavi doesn't exist anymore. I can tell you that much. The Meyer lands, then? They're not in the same... No. The Vale is on the other side of Satessa, far to the east. <laughs> we might have a better time going back up north to Aquas then. But if something happens that prevents us from taking that portal, at least that leaves you another option open. Indeed. What is it you're wanting? Why do you seek a weapon of the gods? You're talking of going to fetch someone back from the underworld who may be quite happy there. And he specifically looks over at Tikaros. And what do you think you will find in Tavi? It won't be anything lucky. Um, it's a tough choice, but, you know, we're on a path of greater destiny. We don't understand it, but we're in this now. We go and we find what we find. We try to do good things. To answer the question directed at me, I wish to even the plague. You can, an even playing field, an even field of battle. You always hear people speak about, I have the higher ground. It just makes it easier to stab up from below. If you're on the high ground, you have to aim down. Have you ever been in a tree and shot at a deer and overshot because you, you didn't aim low enough? You didn't account for the rise of the arrow leaving above. Level playing fields are overrated. The best you can do is avoid... But I wish I have a weapon to instill fear. Mm. Fear in a creature that fears nothing. You'll take out a small stick. Just grab one and... Start drawing a map. And it's pretty detailed. He draws where you're at. He draws Krimnos. Draws down, marks Asphodel. And then puts a mark. That is where you will find Tavi. I'll attempt to copy the map. To the best of my ability. Okay. With my, and uh, if he sees you, tools. he will correct any errors you make. Great. As you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey. If you must go there, and you must confront what you find, Excuse me a moment. I'm trying to figure out how my cat opened the closed and locked door. <laughs> ah, <laughs> she just walked by my foot. Impressive. And that, that is unnerving. <laughs> yeah, just a little. Especially yeah. when Her I'm talking about Tavi. She is a sun claw. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she walked in, took a look around, looked up at me and left. I'm like, okay. Just wanted to prove wow. I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, check that shit 20. out. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Has a little lock picks in her hand. Right. Just reminding you, I control if you live or die. <laughs> <laughs> Just know that what you will find there is neither light nor darkness. Truth and lie. I don't know if it will bring you anything that you seek. But I know you'll find exactly what you're looking for. And then again, he will look directly at Tikaros. But you should be very wary of what you find, because you may not like the lies that are the truth. Very confusing. What do you know of thumbprints or fingerprints? Has any um, religion or, or cult or organization used that as a symbol in history? Hmm. I know there were some battles that used handprint. And of course, they always changed the color depending on what they truly believed. Gold, red, black, blue. There was one group from the sea. In fact. Fingerprints, however. Hmm. I'm not specifically sure of this. I know Perforos has marked many of his makings with what he would call his fingerprint, his mark of the maker. Hmm. It's a way to prove the authenticity of, of a work. There are some artists that do this for their paintings. Uh, a signature, yeah. Why might one do this if they did not intend to take credit for what they made? If they intended to pass it off on someone else? Well, if an artist were to put someone else's maker's mark on their work, if their, the other person's mark was worth more than their own, and they were in comparable style, could you tell them apart? Do you have an example of this mark on your spear? No, I'm right there. There's no remaining marks of Perforos on the spear, only the spirit in which it was made. Hmm. It was a gift. Um, well, it was a paid debt. Well, good to know all the same. Any other questions? Just, this is an out-of-game question. Could I get a pretty good idea based on the answer that he gave me of where that temple is? You know it's in the Siren Sea. He did not give any details beyond that, so that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big area. Um, Vara might have some knowledge of it, but it's not a place people tend to sail a lot because navigation there is difficult at best. Can I do a check for that? Uh, what do you want to check for specifically? Well, does Adrastos say anything in character? Oh, about yeah, us? I'll say where where in the Siren Sea is this Temple of Thassa? Oh, you know, that would probably be um, You said most people don't sail near wherever it is. It's they tend to not to travel the Siren Sea. Probably, probably be a history thing then. If I've been yeah. near there, then I guess maybe survival. But otherwise... it could be that it's Can also legend and myth, so you could do Arcana as well. They're the same. I'll go ahead and do history. <laughs> well, they're not the same, but your stat may be the same. Yeah, my stat's the same. All right, it's a fifteen. That's not bad at all. 
from whatever books I've read on Thassa. You know of a place where Thassa's home is rumored, legend to be. It's in the traveling islands. Hmm. It's oh, down. Um, it's down sorry. near the Dakra Isles, but again, this is legend, so it's not like there's a specific map. Sure. To it. Um. Well, Thassa herself is proclaimed to be near the um, traveling islands. I guess that would be a good place to start, but it's quite a ways south, right? Orcos is just shaking his head. Hmm. You have information we don't? Please share it with us. Are you asking me to? Yes. To find the traveling isles, you will need an item that can direct you to places that are part of the Nyx and part of Theros. They exist not in one place. The islands, by their very name, move. They are protected by the children of Thassa. Mm. And Vara, that would make, have meaning to you. The children of Thassa are basically all of the sea monsters. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so I um, had an encounter with potentially one of those, and it did not go well. So uh, they rarely and that was do. only one. <laughs> they rarely yeah. do. I assure you this is only idle curiosity. If I choose to act on it, it will be at a much later time. I'm we sure have, the stars could guide us. We have our mission, and, and I'll look to Tikros. We have others to take care of. I lent one such item to find such a place to your Leonin friend. I'm sure he died with it. I'm afraid I have no other to give to you. That's quite all right. You've given us a great wealth of information. Yes, knowledge is far more useful than any tool. We can do a little bit then of Then why on pursue our own. the blade? Oh, well, that's my opinion. I'm not speaking on behalf of Adrestos. <laughs> Barra will kind of look to Adrestos and smile. Because rarely has knowledge unseated a tyrant. Well, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta see Barra like... <laughs> I did say rarely. I didn't say uh, never. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, sleep? It's getting late. Seems wise. Well, I hope you all rest well. And Orcos we begin gathering up his equipment. Where are you off to next? Following death, as always. Best of luck. Thank you. One day, maybe my debt will be paid, he says as he stands up and walks over to the grave. And he walks up to it and stops and puts his hand out like he's going to put it on it. And then just closes his fist. And turns and walks off into the woods. May it be a long time before you find death following you, friend. You actually hear him kind of laugh a bit to himself. Kind of that sarcastic kind of a laugh. It's already found me. And just keeps walking.
So it is night, late. You would all probably be a bit tired from the uh, <laughs> the fight, much less trying to figure out his answers. Yep. What would you like to do? I'll take first watch. I'll watch with you. Well, no, I should wait until it's a little darker since I can see in the dark. Precisely. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm sure with Orko so close by, I'm sure we will be perfectly safe at the first little while. So I will take first and you all sleep and I'll wake you. Where are we setting up um, camp? Or are we just sleeping on the wagon? Does the wagon fit? Does the wagon fit all of us? It would be a little tight, yeah. but it this could, could be a fine place know. to set up camp as long as we don't disturb the grave. Well, yeah, I, I wouldn't. I don't know. I would feel Some, somebody's already resting soup. well here. Exactly. Yes. I don't um, know. This feels like a safe place to me. I suppose Orko said that they're at peace. I'd be fine with setting up here. I as well. Well, um, Adrastus made a good point. I can see at night, um, so I'd be happy to take a later watch as well. Yes, of, of course. Every, you all rest and I'll wake you for your watches. All right. What are you going to do while your watch is ongoing? Uh... She's going to do something she kind of hasn't done for a while, uh, which is pray to Eroas. Um, and not sure if she's going to get anything back, but just sit in kind of silent contemplation um, and think. She she knows he's, he's well, Orcus has said that he's not on this plane of existence right now and that he's potentially in a little timeout. Um, so, uh, she doesn't expect to hear anything back, but she's just going to use it as a time to think and contemplate. Okay. Let me perception check. Okay. 20. Oh, that's not bad at all. <laughs> as you're just kind of, uh, you know, Focusing, thinking, maybe walking around a little bit. Um, the light from the fire reflects across the grave. And it's, you, you've you looked at the nameplate at it, but you never really looked at the marker, the grave itself. And you realize that there's a shape on top of it. And as you walk over up to it and look, down onto it. It's like a statue of the person laying there who's buried inside at rest. And it takes you a moment as you look at the face and you walk over and pick up some moss off the ground and you place it around it. And you recognize the face. It's He's older now. This is a much younger face. But it looks just like Orcus would look if he had aged yeah. and grown out a beard. And engraved into the stone on either side of the head. On one side is the symbol of Heliod. On the other side is a symbol. You've seen it before. It's on the old castle of Akros, the kind of the, the, the fortress. It is the symbol of the Queen of Akros. And 
And looking back at the nameplate that's at the end of it, you see it again. Born of a queen, warrior of the gods. And you feel the call, the call to go back home. See what you can do there, knowing that a lot's happened. There's a lot of suffering going on. She'll sit and stare at that. And she probably won't wake anybody and just watch the whole night. Okay. Wow. The night passes quietly. You did your perception, so I'm just going to carry it all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> the night catches, passes quietly. There's really not any motion around until the sun begins to break in the distance. And you hear a little bit of movement behind you. And you feel a hand on your shoulder. And Prime said, you did not rest all night. Um, my mind wouldn't let me. I felt it best everyone else get a rest in it. Are you okay? I have always known my path. I always knew where I was meant to go. I followed well. And I have been lost lately. So I tried to fight through it, figured it was a me testing, but I might have been following the wrong thing. I guess the answer is I don't know. <laughs> I know I am not an experienced traveler in the world, but when I was attempting to determine what I should do, you and our family, of course, told me to do what I felt I should do. What do you feel is right for you? I feel I need to help in a way that is tangible. and earthly <laughs> even if it isn't in the long run Ptolemaeus hmm. once said that uh, we should do what we feel called to do I also always feel like he's hiding something, but I don't know. It's only when he's talking to me, I guess. Strange. No, I, th I think that's kind of just him. I think he has a lot. He thinks a lot. He's in his head a lot. Has he ever said something you thought you heard and then you immediately can't remember what he said? I get that with a lot of people, so I thought that was just me. Uh. <laughs> But yes. I'm sure he has his own calling as well. And I fear a lot of us feel our calling needs to be done alone. But I, th I think we all can learn to rely on each other a little more. But I worry that, maybe not worry, perhaps I'm relieved. I Perhaps 
there are others that would benefit from my aid more. It will leave an empty spot in my heart if you were to leave. But know that I would support you in whatever you do. And while I am no great hero, I'm no Adrastos. <laughs> if you would ever need anything from me, please know. Just ask. I will do whatever little things I could do. You may not think you know humanity well sometimes, Prime. But I think you understand being a family better than a lot of people do. Mm. I try. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, your family. Perhaps we should start breakfast for the rest of the family. Of course. And he will go back and begin to gather food stuff. No. He's not going to wake Ariana anybody will up, start though. as well. <laughs> yeah, no, Ari Ariana will, will, will start, like, helping with cooking and stuff and so that people can wake up to the smell of whatever food we're able to scrounge together. So I will leave it up to you guys uh, when you wake up. Do the wonderful smells <laughs> of cooking whatever they could find. Adrastos probably wakes up pretty early because he was planning to not sleep long, but he also got the crap kicked out of him. Yeah, so exactly. He slept a lot longer than he wanted to. <laughs> um, but I think he'll probably wake up as the sun is coming up. So probably right as that conversation is ending. Yeah. <laughs> Start working on stuff. I, I imagine Hyrax as an early riser to begin with. I was going to, yeah. <laughs> The two early boys. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, seems we've slept through our watch. Perhaps we should wake the others for breakfast. Fortunately, we're not dead. Yes, well, we had... <laughs> we had a good Valid? watch over us. I know you don't know Ariana that well, but she's solid and she's Saved my life on more than one occasion, so. And only occasionally runs off on her own to chase dark shadows. You always come back, though. <laughs> yeah. So I'll go and uh, wake Vara and Tikaros. Mm. Try to wake Ptolemaeus. <laughs> no, I'm going to let Ptolemaeus sleep. He's either. still out. <laughs> <laughs> I is going to go Michael. see what's being cooked. Yeah, me too, me too. It smells delicious. Did we have rations? Was I able to, like, catch a hair or we, something? We we'd had food that we'd collected before, so you guys had had plenty of All rations right. and stuff. So. In that case, yeah. there would be no hunting. <laughs> <laughs> delicious smelling thingamadoos. Some, so she'll try to, like, <laughs> mock together some kind of, like, acros. Like, one of those, like, home comfort foods, you know, like something mom used to make, but, like, with whatever you have to kind of <laughs> try to put together something. Some kind mac of stew, and, mac and cheese with chili in it, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I was just right. talking about that the other day. I desperately want that now. I just um, made that the other day. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now uh, I'm hungry. I know. Now I'm hungry. Uh, <laughs> Ari will kind of look over her shoulder and and wave. Said, "Good morning. Uh, breakfast is almost ready." Hmm. Amazing. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, when we woke us up, <laughs> Vara <Yeah>. obviously doesn't <laughs> mind that very much. Do you think Hyrax would be able to tell that she didn't sleep? I Can I roll insight? Okay. And deception or from deception Ariana if she's trying to hide it. <laughs> um, let's take, well. 
I'm going to say using our past connection against her. <laughs> that Adrastos <laughs> knows. Uh, <laughs> I rolled 27. Uh, you beat my 21. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, have a, I have a plus That's... nine to insight and I rolled 18. Wow. wow nice. My goodness. Hot damn. Um, yeah, Ariana is like chipper um and like not in that like manic i haven't slept kind of way but like clearly you know she's had a rough go of it that has been kind of a little downtrodden the last little while and so but this is like her kind of normal self um but she definitely like there's bags under her eyes and and she's you know a little bit more slumped than her normal kind of like heroic perfect posture she's just a little bit over you didn't sleep uh no um you all had a rough go of it yesterday and thought I would uh, give you the opportunity for a little extra rest. You were in that fight too. Uh, Is there well, something else? Um, the hero buried here is not just a son of Heliod. Um, he's also a son of Akros. Hmm. I may just be being selfish and homesick. I don't think I've ever been homesick before, but I fear that I may need to depart. And I needed to think on that. Um, and all of my thinking has brought me to the conclusion that uh, I, I believe I do. Um, I, I have never wanted to be a hero. I have never really been one. I, I'm a helper. And I, this is all so beyond me, the thought of going to the land of the dead and the, I've been trying to hold it together and trying to push through all of this, but I, I just need to help something to the end in a quick fashion. And I know this is selfish of me and I know I'm leaving all of you to a wild adventure, but I don't think I can go with you. Not selfish to follow your path, Ariana. I've told you that before. If we're being honest, I'm surprised you've been with us this long. <laughs> he says with that kind of sardonic try not to cry laugh <laughs> <laughs> well couldn't let you out all on your own for that long could i now um <clears throat> well uh I, I think that Ariana's probably already like packed her bags and like already has like it's kind of ready and like was sort of preparing for this. Mm -hmm. Um I probably best for all of us to go on our ways. Adrastos at this point is eschewing the usual arm clasp hug that he does is just going to wrap both of his arms around Ariana and then he's going to whisper into her ear, I'm proud of you, sister. Keep them safe. And then pat her on the back and let her go. He, she doesn't let him go quite yet and just <laughs> like holds on a little bit longer um, and then kind of holds him at arm's length for a second nods. Um, she's uh, going to go over to Tikaros and like pick Tika Rose up and give her like a really big hug. <laughs> I'm fully going to cry in a sec here, just FYI guys. Uh, <laughs> already doing it, so you're fine. Oh, I know, I'm already gone. Um, and uh, and 
sort of like set her down and be like, never stop investigating. Well, now, how could I ever? And <laughs> Ari, Ari, Ari. And she'll like pull you down so she can whisper in your ear. Ari, can you take that awful mechanical owl with you? <laughs> and whenever you want to see us, just send us a message. <laughs> How about I give you this? And she'll um, place something in your hand, and it's the stone. Oh. I can call you on this. Harry. Not yet. I, I need to go speak to the priests, but they're who I'm going to look for. So you'll be able to reach me. Okay. And they'll be able to keep you informed on everything that's going on. Um, And uh, she'll go to Vara and give Vara a very big hug. <laughs> um, remember that strength isn't this and you are stronger than almost anyone I've ever met and I'll get you I'll take care of him of, of all of them <laughs> <laughs> she gives her a bit of a wink and <laughs> uh, goes over um, and, and goes up to Hyrax and um, puts out a, a Good hand for handshake. Now, before you move away from Barbara, oh, real sorry. Quick, just real quick, she'll she'll press a um, one of the reviving coins in your hand and oh. um, say, uh, "I know you're not dead, um, nor are you passing or anything like that, but this is uh, this is just my best way of knowing how to say goodbye um, and keeping you safe." I it's will. what I it's what I did for Drastus, and it's what I'm gonna do for you too. I will keep it close always. Uh, yeah, and then go over to Hyrax and offer a hand. Hyrax will take her hand and and look her in the eyes and say, I know I've only just met you, but I at least want to say that being a helper and being a hero are not so far removed. And I think you're probably both. Well, uh, it takes one to know one. Appreciate it. Mm. Safe travels to you. And to you. Uh, and she'll she'll kind of just pull a little bit close and just sort of stage whisper, watch out for them for me. <laughs> That's what I'm good at. I thought so. She'll kind of pat his hand and walk over to uh, to Prime and give Prime a hug and just say thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your friendship. Oh, and he's... you're muted. <laughs> now you're not. You're just teasing me. <laughs> <laughs> he will say thank you for your friendship. And he will roll up the scroll that he was doing something on when you came up and hand it to you. Um, this should allow you to gain any assistance you need in traveling. Um, once you meet any, reach any major port, it is, uh, it's signed by Elitus and it is a travel paper allowing you, uh, money basically to secure travel, uh, in the name of the council. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> and he will uh, take Bubo and hand him to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure he gets home safe, and I will have him find you when I've made it to Akros. You realize she just said, Owl, keep him sick. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. <laughs> I, See, I never really get hard... my own jokes that I make bad puns. <laughs> anyway, uh, she'll kind of put Bubo up on her shoulder, um, and and she'll walk over to uh, Ptolemaeus as well, and sort of just like 
ruffle his hair a little bit. Um, this little mage hand <laughs> appears and puts it back, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot mess up the alignment of the stars, okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It can't be must. Um, oh, and it. she'll probably just kind of lean down uh, to him and um, uh, just say, uh, in kind of into his ear a little bit. Um, don't let your secrets stop you. And we'll get up and have her backpack on and sort of walk off to the edge of the forest, kind of, I guess, the opposite direction of where Orcos went. And after, as you get to the edge, um, address us, feel out Ariana of Akros. And he'll give you the gladiator yeah. salute. She'll hit it back. And then, like, all serious. Mm -hmm. And then smile. And kind of do this as she walks away. <laughs> <laughs> and head off. Ooh.